Let's have a look and see what John's doing today. He's at the table saw, as usual. But because I'm from the near future, I can say that the cut that he's making is wrong. These pieces are for a door jam, and he finds out later that they need to be wider. Oddly enough, the doorway that he's trimming doesn't have a door. It's just an opening that leads to the stairs that go to the basement. So he finished cutting the plywood wrong, and now he's moved on to some solid maple. And he's kind of got an interesting idea here. I have to give him credit. He really doesn't have enough of this solid hardwood to make the trim that he wants in the profile that he wants. So instead, he's going to make what's known as a built-up molding. And that's where you make more than one part and join them together so it looks like a single piece in the end. And the molding profile that he's making here is pretty simple. It's just steps. And you might be saying, well, why would you do this? What's the point? Why not just, you know, go buy more lumber and cut it out properly? Well, first of all, is that to cut molding properly, you need some kind of molding cutter, especially this one where the center of the molding is recessed in. That needs to be smooth. And unless you want to do a ton of sanding, it's easier to build it up like he's doing here. Now back to what's left of the plywood. He needs to cut some strips. But he's making these slightly oversized. And once again, I've got to give him credit here for this good idea. He wants to cut a tongue on each edge of the strips of plywood. And that tongue will fit into a corresponding slot in the strips of the solid maple that he just finished planning. And that tongue and groove joint will keep the parts in line. And to make these joints in one pass, he's changed out the blade on his table saw to one that's a little bit thicker, a full eighth of an inch. I can see that he's cutting the slot and the solid wood parts deeper than it needs to be. And that makes sense. You don't want to mess around with precision fit on this where it really doesn't matter. And now he's cutting the tongue on the edges of the plywood. Once again, doing that in a single pass. And then checking the fit to make sure it goes in there well. And that looks really good. So now he's pulling out his router table to slightly round over the corners on those solid wood pieces before he puts the trim together. And that's another advantage. You can get those inside corners rounded over easily this way before you assemble the trim. And I want to point something out here. It looks like he's going in the wrong direction. And he is actually, but it's on purpose. This is what's known as a climb cut. And you can do that under certain circumstances like this one. The cutter is very small and it won't grab the work aggressively and it prevents tear out while you're rounding the corner. I'm gonna break in and give you a heads up to take advantage of the Maker's Mob lowest price drop ever. This Black Friday, Cyber Monday, for a limited time, the Maker's Mob presents the Authentic Craftsman series. In this limited run series, teachers like myself, Jimmy DeResta, John Peters, Neil Pask, the Samurai Carpenter, Liam Hoffman, and Frank Howarth will teach you the skills necessary to become a real craftsman. Through a curated list of woodworking projects and tutorials, there is no question this series will have you well on your way to becoming a well-rounded craftsman. So click the link in the description below to get access now and take advantage of our lowest price ever before it ends this Monday at midnight. And then he's getting smarter. He's doing a dry fit here to see if it's going together well before he puts any glue on there. I think you probably also measured it to see if it's the right width. And then you don't have to glue the whole thing. You can, or you can just do spots like he's doing here. All you need is to get this put together so it stays together until you can get it cut to length and installed. Maybe I should mention that another advantage of this is that you can use something different, like the plywood he's using in the middle here. It doesn't have to match the solid wood that he's using. It could be another type of wood altogether to use as an accent. The pieces that he's cutting and planing here are for the top of the opening. They're just plain and flat. But once again, he'll be making another part to add to this to add detail. Now this is kind of interesting. He's got a piece of solid maple that's an inch and a half thick and four inches wide. And he's laying this strip on top to draw out a taper across. These are going to be decorative pieces that'll go up in the corners and they're wedge shaped. And now he wants to show off his new bandsaw by changing the blade and showing how easy that is. 
the blade that was on there was a quarter inch and now he's putting on the half inch one to make that cut through the four inches of maple. And he's just doing the cut freehand and then it takes it over to the lighter saw to trim off the ends. And now this is interesting because he's taking the parts and double side taping them together. And I think what he wants to do here is run those through the planer so that he can smooth out those bandsaw cuts. And yeah, that's what he's doing. You can pop those apart and pull off the tape and trim the ends again because he left them a little bit long, you know, to try to deal with snipe. And now he's flipped it over and made this cut specifically like this because it needs to be 90 degrees on the end where it goes up in the corner. And to go even further with the look, he made another one, a smaller one. And here you can see that he's got that put on top of the other one to make that cut. That end cut needs to be at the right angle because these two are going to be installed together. Now this is wood that he's had for many years. He's going to do some sanding on it and clean it up and make it nice and smooth. Well, that was jarring. All of a sudden he's inside now and he's putting together the jam that he messed up before. He recut one piece and he actually made one piece a little bit wider. And he's not actually this tall. He's standing on a step stool that he made a couple years ago. Another thing that's jarring is the point of view camera work where you can barely see what he's doing. It's jiggling all over the place, but he refuses to stop doing. Anyway, you can get that in the opening and he's not fastening it to begin with. He's going to fasten it in place with the trim. And that starts with a plinth block at the bottom. This is just a solid block of maple that's a little bit thicker than the trim and adds a little bit more detail. Before he did any of this, he sprayed water-based polyurethane onto the trim and the jam and all the parts so that it has at least two coats of finish. And then he can put on the final coat after it's all installed. And he's using construction and adhesive to glue the molding to the wall, just in dabs again. And he's also put a strip of construction adhesive down the back of the trim where it touches the jam to glue that joint together. And of course, you can't see that in his terrible camera work here. And smartly he's using pins to put this all together because he knows that the glue is going to be the real holding power there. And he's not driving any nails into the other side of the trim and into the wall. He's relying on the glue there again. And this is that big block of solid wood for the top of the opening. And a single nail right in the middle and then here's the trim on the inside of the opening. And here are those tapered blocks that give this kind of an art deco look that matches that ceiling that he just finished. Or that was his intention. He fancies himself a bit of a designer with good taste. But I don't know. I don't see it. Anyway, he's just gluing these in place and he's using clamps. Uh, to hold them up. And here's the scribing that he left out. So he's just using a pencil with some tape wrapped around it because there's not much of a gap here. And then he brings it out to the shop and he uses his electric hand plane to plane it down and back in and it fits nicely. And that's the way you scribe molding to a wall. And then here's the smaller of the tapered blocks getting glued in as well. And this is the next day, I think because he's got the other clamp taken off and he's putting on a new one. Yeah, and that looks pretty good. And you can see the angle on the end, how it needed to be cut with the other block to make it tight. And then here's the piece that I mentioned before to dress up that plain piece of molding across the top. And this is the same profile that he used on the shelves that he built in the stairs before. He's got the two bigger nail holes in the plinth block to fill up. And I think he filled up most of the pin holes as well. And now he's rubbing it with a Scotch-Brite pad to rough it up for the final coat of water-based polyurethane. And then after that was dry, he did some caulking to cover the gaps where he wasn't as careful as he should have been. But I have to once again give him credit 
this does look pretty cool. 